Hey, beautiful people. Our 10 gig on a budget adventure begins with a pair of Solar Flare SFN 5152F necks. And for fun, we're going to pair them with two Finstar FTLX 10 gig SFP plus transceivers. 3 meters OM4 LCD LC fiber from Monoprice will complete our trinity of frugality. And if you're looking for full hydro adapters, these work, but they're going to be extra. Let's have a look at what showed up in the post. Both cards, they're individually wrapped in. For $12.99, that is going above and beyond. I have expected them to be bouncing around in a box full of foam peanuts, but nay. This is some serious gourmet shit. If you're unfamiliar with SFP cards, it goes like this. Big Chunky Heatsink, located in the Big Chunky Heatsink section. Hmm? followed by an SFP cage for your fiber adapt transceiver. And the back of the card goes on the back. That's all there is to it. Up next, we have the Finstar FTLX 10 gig SFP plus transceivers. Like any transceiver, they consist of 2.5 parts. Now the first part is going to be the one that plugs into your network card or switch using these connectors. And the second part holds your fiber cables. The final part will be the Monoprice OM4 LC to LC fiber optic cable of mighty justice and significant pew. You know what? Let's get things plugged in. First thing we're going to do is pop off the dust covers. Do yourself a favor and hold on to them for later use. Now let's talk about latches. They can differ from transceiver to transceiver, but their function is the same. Pull out to eject. Push into lock. Let's get the OM4 fiber noodle plugged into the transceivers. The first thing we need to do is remove the dust shields. Do not lose those. And now we're going to put this latch on to the latch receptacle. Push that in to your click. Now, it should be nice and stung if you need to remove the cable from the transceiver. All you have to do is just press down and pull out. Watch this. Press down, pull out. That's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and pop that back in. Like so. Before we install the card, let me show you the correct way to insert the transceiver. You slide it in, it clicks. To remove it, pull back on the release latch and give it a tug. You don't have to worry about plugging in the wrong way either, um, unless you have a hammer. And yes, like USB, transceivers suffer from the same superposition. All that's left to do is install the card in the spare PCIe slot. This particular one will live inside of a Dell 3010 with the uh, super annoying toolless card retention system of half working. But now that it's set up, let's uh, get everything installed on Linux. One of the benefits of Linux is devices like 10 gig network cards, fiber cards in general, or just ethernet cards in general, and a lot of other hardware is you plug them in you power on the system, and you're done. That's it. Now, what you're seeing here is NM Connection Editor and Debian. It has all the options you would typically expect to see. Since the Solar Flare is treated like any other network device, this one's configured as the primary interface, and it's connected to a 10 gig switch in the studio, but more than likely, you're adding these as a second card for a direct connection to another PC, so you want to remove things like default gateway, DNS servers, and Basically, just assign an IP address, a net mask, and you're good to go. We can verify everything is working with a quick IPA. That will show you if the card is functioning, and a quick sensors command will let us know if things are nice and toasty, possibly melting, but no, everything is fine. I was a little worried about that, but they do seem to run well within spec. But, on to the main event. I'm using iperf3 to send and receive. And apologies to Windows users, I understand you lot have difficulty understanding data if it's not presented with brightly colored motion graphics. Allow me to assure you that yes, we are getting a full gigabyte per second. Hey, look at that, we did a thing. That was kind of brilliant, that was fun. It was a bit of a challenge, and if you've missed out, like on the original Melanox 2 a few years back, when those were just flooding the internet, you're in now. Buy them while they're there. I've been using them in the studio for the past uh, week and a half. I've done two shows with them. No issues with the transceivers or the cards. So feel safe in picking them up and setting them up on your Linux distribution. Windows users, 
I, I'm not picking on you. I don't know if they work under Windows 7, 8, 9, 10, or whatever it's currently at. But I do know all the people supporting us on patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast are fantastic, masterful human beings that have nothing but our love. Uh, they make everything we do possible. Thank you all very much. If you get an extra buck a week, we would very much appreciate it and use it to make more independent content like this. That's patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Also, linuxgamecast.com is a website that we have that people sometimes visit. All right. As always, get out there. Just make something awesome.